one, Chibo is here bringing you my Hyundai A League fixture review for the fixtures of week 12. So, a lot went on this weekend, and let's get straight into it. So, the first game of the weekend, so Western Sydney Wanderers beat Newcastle Jets 2 0. Now, this really wasn't surprising. We know how good Western Sydney are, we know that Newcastle Jets have been struggling last season, they're also struggling this season, but, uh, what else can you say? A goal in each half saw Western Sydney Wanderers continue their great run of form, which sees them unbeaten in nine fixtures, while Newcastle are winless in eight. So complete opposite parts of form for these two clubs, and it really showed on the pitch. Aguilar scored in injury time to make it 1-0 to the host before going into the halftime break. And Bridge scored the second for Western Sydney Wanderers in the second half, which has seen him score in each of his last five starts. So Bridge proving if he starts, he can score. And uh, not that Western Sydney Wanderers really need it at the moment because they're scoring quite frequently. And they're winning. They're, they're, they've won eight and drawn one of their last nine. So they're doing very, very well. And what else would you expect now? The second game of the weekend saw Adelaide United dominate a 10-man Wellington Phoenix 3-0. Now, Matty Musket scored an own goal, which saw Adelaide United take the lead late in the first half. Goodwin tried to find Bruce Gite, but unfortunately Musket was in the way, which saw the ball deflect off him into the back of the net to make it 1-0 to Adelaide. But, uh... That wasn't the worst of the worries. Riera was sent off in the 56th minute after receiving two yellow cards. Now, if you're on a yellow, you've got to, you've really got to be careful what you do because the referee is going to keep his eye on you at all times. Riera did, did he was a bit stupid, and it, it ultimately cost him. But not only did it cost him, it did also cost his team. Adelaide United took full advantage and managed to score two goals in the space of two minutes. The 72nd, no, the 73rd and the 75th. Goodwin scored the second for Adelaide when he fired from range and Glenn Moss was unable to hold the strike. Now, Moroni cuts in from the right-hand side. He shoots on the left foot. Glenn Moss should have saved it. It's gone straight through his hands and into the back of the net. Now, Glenn Moss had a mare. He didn't have the best of games, but... Now, when you're down to 10 men, you're going to be dealing with a lot of pressure, and there's not much he really could have done. Morone scored the final goal two minutes later. We saw him, saw him score his first ever A-League goal. So, Morone is finally got the goal next to his name. I bet you'd be happy to get that duck off his back. Now, Wellington are struggling this season and could see themselves finishing outside the top six if their form continues, which I, I, I don't think they want. I don't think Wellington Phoenix want that, especially considering they're trying to get new licensing. They need to start really improving rather than declining. And also, Adelaide United have turned their fortunes around and they push ever closer to the top six, which is where they want to be. The third game of the weekend saw Sydney FC beat Central Coast Mariners 4-1. Now, this was quite an interesting result. Now, in a thrilling fixture, there were four goals and a red card all in the first half. That's correct. All in the first half. Now, two goals from Brosk. The goal from Tavares. So, Sydney FC winning 3-0 after half an hour. So, Sydney FC were flying. And, uh, Ascroft managed to get one back for Central Coast. He scored his first ever A-League goal. But, it clearly wasn't enough. Now, Central Coast were reduced to 10 men. Paul Izzo did get himself sent off in the first half. That is why their problems did happen. You know, if you're going to get sent off, well, we, as a goalkeeper, I mean, we're not in the we're not in the best league. The, the reserve keeper is not going to be that good. Putting a lot of pressure on the team if you go down to ten men, and not only uh, you're going to have to sub a keeper on, someone else is missing out. So, Paul Izzo, disappointing, mate, disappointing, but. McGing scored an unfortunate own goal in the late stages of the second half. We saw Sydney grab a comfortable win. Now, Sydney FC will have confidence going into their next fixture and beyond if they can continue to play like they did on the weekend. But Central Coast, you know, I criticised them at the start of the season. 
I think their season is already over. You know, it's it's beyond a joke now. I think they're going to claim the wooden spoon. They may as well take it now. I don't see them getting off the bottom of the ladder. And uh, it's practically a ridden off season for Central Coast. I don't know how they're going to turn things around next season. But I do think this season is already finished for them. Now the fourth game of the weekend saw Melbourne victory draw one all with Perth Glory. Barisha scored the opener from the penalty spot in the first half. While Diego Castro equalised also from the penalty spot for Perth Glory late in the second half. So it was a one-all draw. If you want to know more about this match, I will leave a link down in the description below because I have already covered this. Uh, I think I covered it yesterday. So uh, be sure to check that video out. Now, the final game of the weekend saw a bit of an upset because Brisbane Raw beat Melbourne City 3-1. Brisbane Raw were 2-0 up at the half-time break thanks to a goal from Brallo and an own goal from Captain Patrick Kisnorbo from Melbourne City. Fornaroli scored an early goal in the second half to add to his scoring tally and it did give Melbourne City a, a bit of hope to get back into the game. And it did look that way then in the 90th minute things went wrong. Sorensen went up for a corner late in the game which ended up being cleared from the Brisbane Raw defence and landed in the path of super sub Henry Gay. Now I have spoken about this lad before. You should know about him. He is a, he's a he's a great he's the Chicharito of the A League. Let's put it that way. Now Enrique managed to carry the ball just past the halfway line before he shot in to an open goal just after the halfway halfway line. I think he was in the circle. I think he's still in the centre circle. So he shot from a long way out. Went into the back of it. He scored. He made it 3-1. Melbourne City's chances of grabbing a draw were over. And Brisbane Raw managed to uh, to keep in touch with Western Sydney Wanderers after the win. Now, Melbourne City were unable to continue their domination over the, like, you know, you know they've scored 16 goals in the last four weeks. They only managed to score one today. Why has this happened? Why the sudden drop off? Why did they have such problems? You know, Aaron Moy did play, I do believe. Um, it's just, it's hard to see. Melbourne City dominating, and then just an upset. Brisbane Raw, clearly the better side on the day. But uh, what does this mean for Melbourne City? Does this mean they're going to keep struggling? Does this mean they're going to improve? I don't know. Let me know in the comments section below. Now, we get into the more important thing of the day, which is the A League ladder. I'll bring that for you right now. And as you can see, Western Sydney Wanderers top the table on 26 points. Now, Brisbane Raw are two points behind them, and not much movement in the table in in, in this week's fixtures. So Melbourne City still sit in third place even after the loss. They're now four points off Brisbane Raw and six points from leaders Western Sydney Wanderers. Sydney FC managed to pick up three points, but it wasn't enough. They still trail on goal difference compared to Melbourne City. And my team, Melbourne Victory, only managed to pick up a point. We are nine points behind leaders Western Sydney Wanderers. So Melbourne Victory have to really hope for some upsets in the next in the next few weeks or even later on in the season. But the way things are going. Western Sydney Wanderers and Brisbane Raw, the two favourites for the title, with Melbourne City and Sydney FC close behind them. Wellington Phoenix did lose this weekend. Adelaide United picked up a win, which saw them overtake Newcastle Jets. It did also see them overtake Perth Glory. And uh, as you can see, Adelaide United only two points now from the top six. So Wellington Phoenix obviously struggling. They need to turn things around because otherwise their top six chances are... So they're still in it. Don't get me wrong, they're still in it. But uh, there's still a lot of work to be done there at Wellington. Now Adelaide United slowly, slowly picking up some form now. 13 points. Surely they're going to continue their form and push for that top six spot and try and knock Wellington Phoenix out. Newcastle Jets uh, haven't won in quite a while now. So it doesn't look like they're going to make the top six. Although their points still indicate that they do have a chance. If their form continues the way it's going at the moment, I don't think that's an option. So Perth Glory did pick up a draw this weekend. For some reason, they've dropped on the table as well. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. He under A-League, 
get your stuff sorted, please. Now, Perth Glory sit on 12 points, as you can see, though. It's only three points off the top six. So the top six, it looked like there was a huge gap a few weeks ago. But now things are getting ever closer. But as I said, Central Coast Mariners haven't won since the opening day. They've only drawn two fixtures after that. They've lost nine. And as you can see now, sitting on five points, they're already ten points clear of sixth place. So it looks like Central Coast aren't going to make the top six this season. As I said, I don't know what they're going to do. Now, as you can see here, the most goals scored, Bruno Fornaroli added to his total this weekend. It's seen him go up to ten goals. Bessart Brisha also added to his total, which sees him on eight. It's only two goal difference there now. Krishna, Nichols, and Moy still on six assists. Aaron Moy still tops it with seven. Browich with five. Jamison with four. Krishna and Gruccio are both on three. Most saves is Thomas Sorensen on 48. Birigetti on 45. Glenn Moss on 38. Then Kovic and Vukovic up there as well. Completed passes still Miguel Angel Garcia Perez from Brisbane Raw. Uh, Sanchez, McGowan, Boles, and Delgado all trailing, but it looks like Brisbane Raw do have a bit of passing prowess in their game. And most clearances is Matthew German with 45, Lee Broxham on 44, Ben Sigmund, Manny Musket, and Andrew Durante all 43, 43, and 42. So as I said earlier, Wellington, Phoenix know how to clear the ball, but unfortunately they don't know how to score. So that is a bit of a problem for them. But that is it for my Hyundai A-League fixture review for the fixtures of week 12. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more Hyundai A-League content. And I'll catch you guys on another video.